Uh, Thaddeus, thank you so much for chatting with me. I really do appreciate it. I'm delighted to. Well, it, it's it's a real privilege. Uh, I know you you directed the Miracle Club, which is so much fun. It's such a wonderful film. Good. And uh, I, I was wondering what excited you to tell this story. Uh, well, I grew up knowing about Lourdes, and I, I think you know it's just so much part of uh, Irish Catholic culture. Um, everybody went to Lourdes. I didn't go, but uh, my parents went, and uh, and everybody in our street seemed to have a, an experience, a lurid experience. So it was um, something that was uh, always there. The whole idea of miracles, uh, of course, as well, and and pilgrimage. Um, you know, it was very common for families to go off on pilgrimages around Ireland, uh, maybe even for or just for the day within the day or. Well, something like Loch Dare would be a couple of days. Uh, so pilgrimage was all, was all, also uh, often part of um, Catholic life, and um, so and I love the period. Of course, it's the period that I left Ireland. I grew up there. I left when I was eighteen. So I set the film in the sixties, and uh, it was a period that um, meant a lot to me and was uh, interesting for me to uh, take a look at it. Um, yeah, so I, I it was love- funny. funny. I hadn't done much comedy, uh, so the mixture of drama and comedy is uh, is really uh, is really was really interesting for me. And of course, the you know the fact that it's a serious, it's got a serious element to it, uh, the spirituality, uh, the reconciliation, and 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 that. But it's also uh, I like those characters, some of them anyway. <laughs> They're able to laugh at themselves and even laugh at lures and uh, and not not be overly pious and um and and could still feel religious without being, you know, would still, you know, be able to be satirical as well. Maggie Maggie the Maggie Smith character is uh you know, is 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 quite um quite funny about our Lord on the cross. You know, it's the kind of thing my mother would have said, you know, uh, she, she stand back from themselves for a minute and uh, and and just, uh, y- you know, being religious is a serious business. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, if people can take time off from it, then it's that's all to the good. Yeah. And still be religious, you know. Yeah. Not, not leave it behind. Absolutely. Well, and and this film strikes a wonderful balance between those two things. You know, it really does because Lourdes is is held up and uh, you know in, in high regard. And at one point they talk about holy ground, and and yet it's still sort of sort of distant or different from that. Like you like you said, there's there's a humor about it, able to able to laugh at it. Uh, I mean, you you talk about your your parents went to Lourdes, but I was wondering if you could talk about the legacy of of this place for people that that don't really know what it is. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, <clears throat> for Catholics, it's a, a, a it's a place of pilgrimage, of course, because Our Lady appeared there in the mid in the mid nineteenth century, and uh, uh, people go there to um, uh, for a spiritual experience. Uh, they go there, um, some uh, hoping for a miracle, um, but I think most go for um, to step out of their lives uh, for a moment and uh, and, um, and pretend they're on some kind of spiritual holiday. You know, mm. I think it's a it, it's a it's a break from the routine uh, of um, religious devotion. And uh, introduces them to another side of it, where they can uh, immerse themselves. On the one hand, because uh, you're there for a week or whatever it is, and uh, you immerse yourself on the one hand. But on the other hand, you have a chance to have a bit of fun as well. Um, I mean, I think people really enjoy their trips to Lourdes, um, and they enjoy being among people who are um, so spiritually engaged. Uh, and I think it's a very 
humbling uh, experience mm. for uh, for people who are um, not religious as well who go to Lourdes. Uh, they inevitably come back having had a uh, a spiritual experience that was unexpected and uh, not particularly religious but uh, it's um, they're able to engage with elements of their life which they're encouraged to by the atmosphere there and, uh, and uh, that's really interesting um, I remember reading a quote from Bob Geldof uh, who's um, famously anarchic not religious at all <laughs> and, uh, he said he came back and he felt like a new man. <laughs> He's, he had quite a uh, quite um, an experience there. I don't think it was anything transform transformative, but I think he was quite surprised by how spiritual he felt. Well, you know, it's interesting because you, you talk about the pilgrimage to Lourdes, but I know that, uh, of course, Catholic pilgrimage to Lourdes, every, it seems that everybody ha takes a pilgrimage some way in some different place. And I was wondering from your from your perspective, what's the power of a pilgrimage? What I mean, we talk about you talk about here about even Bob Geldof saying he's had this experience. But what where do you think what do you think the power is of a of a pilgrimage of any type? Well, that's an expression of uh, faith. I mm. think if it's, uh, you know, if you're a Catholic, I think it's a, an expression of uh, your own belief. Mm. And, uh, and I think that uh, it's to re-engage with what it is that you, it's to engage again with what it is that you feel about uh, your your religion mm. and about God. And it is, uh, it's just, a, it's, an, it's something that you, um, you impose upon yourself. Uh, it's immersive. You don't have to, you don't have to, you go there, but other than that, you don't have to do anything. You're immediately immersed. Mm. You've left your life behind and uh, you've left your work behind and probably a lot of the thinking behind as well. And you, uh, you're more open hearted, I think, probably, which I think is the experience people have uh, when they're in Lourdes. They might, they might go feeling quite uptight about the whole thing. But when you're confronted by the open heartedness of everybody around you, I think that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, they might not go for that, but I think that's what they get when they go, when they get, that's what they feel when they go there. Um, we used to go to Knock in the west of Ireland, which is, a, again, is Marian Shrine. And uh, we hated going because we were kids and we were stuck in the back of the car and we had to say the rosary, you know, over and over again. On the way down, it was a, you know, four hour drive. It was a, proper and we went down back in the same day my parents couldn't afford to stay in hotels and things mm. and, uh, and it was like prayer from morning to night but if you go to a uh, if you go to a pilgrimage site and you have a bit of chance uh you know where you have a reason to be there uh we didn't as kids particularly our parents just took us there and said this is what you do and um but i think if you have got a, 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 if you're motivated to be there it's a lovely experience, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely, and you can see that in these in these characters. You know, they the, you know they can't can't wait to get there. Most of them cannot wait to get to Lourdes because they're looking for a miracle, and that's such a key key thing within this film. And certainly, you know, with as the characters unfold and we see how things unravel and why they're going um it's but they've got this miracle of the this unknown miracle in front of them that they're looking for i guess it's not unknown to them but unknown for us yeah, and then and then you know uh what are your expectations of a miracle you know when when uh, when eileen goes and yeah. she's she's got uh, she's been told that she's got breast cancer uh what what are she's got a lump which she thinks is cancerous uh and she's terrified uh and and so she, you know, at the, at later on, the Laura Linney character says to her, uh, did you not go to a doctor? Yeah. No, I went to Lourdes. You know, as, if, as if that was, uh, y you know, it was an option, you know. Uh, you never know. Uh, I mean, if you confronted Eileen and said, do you absolutely believe in miracles? She'd go, well, I don't have to think about that. That's, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't have to worry myself about that. I just go uh, to Lourdes and, and, uh, 
because you know if there's if something's going to happen it's going to happen there it's not going to happen and you know at home in dublin <laughs> yeah. uh it's funny really uh so uh, but yeah you know so she's reminded that you know you have to go to a doctor as well you know i wouldn't put all your eggs in the one basket <laughs> Yeah, it, and, it's... And the, the, the Maggie Smith character, she's not really going for a miracle. I don't think uh, she's she's going for the spiritual, uh, you know, engagement with herself. Uh, I don't think she's going for a miracle. But um, uh, the young Dolly is for her for her boy, uh, and um, doesn't know what to do with her guilt, uh, and uh, maybe it'll help. It'll help. It'll help that. But uh, she she goes so that her son will uh, will speak, and um, so some go for miracles and some some go go for all kinds of other reasons. Uh, my my parents went because they my father had been ill and they had uh, they prayed and and he got better and she went to say thank you to our lady for her intercession. So it was a very joyful trip for them. I remember they talking. I was very young, so I don't remember it, but they talked about it. My mother, anyway, talked about it a lot, uh, and uh, how it was. Uh, it was. It was. They had fun. Well, you know, it's it, it's really amazing to see these characters sort of on on their journeys unravel, especially when they're when they're somewhere else, when they're in in Lords and and it's coming together. And uh, one of the things I think is so interesting about this is the film really sort of sits in the tension of belief and like fact, if that makes any sense. Because I know the, the, the priest actually at one point is asked if, if Mary did show up, I believe is the quote, I could be wrong. And he says, I believe it, whether she did or not, it's unimportant. And, yeah, and the Laura Linney character says, I wouldn't, uh... I wouldn't spread that word around too much if I was you. Yeah. So you know, not every police believes in miracles. Uh, not every, uh, not every religious, not every Catholic believes in miracles. Uh, I know we're talking about the '60s, but we've set him up as a a priest who's, you know, who's pretty open-minded. Uh, he, he, I didn't want to have a kind of, you know, I come from a, I was I was educa educated by priests, by Christian brothers, and by nuns, mm. but uh, I didn't want to make the, the priest into a, anything to do with my experience of, of priest. It was, uh, I wanted him to be a, a priest that people would want to go and talk to. And, uh, and so he's, uh, he's um, you know, he, he, he also, he, he's talking to the Laura Linney character and, and he's, he's, he wants to have an intelligent conversation with her. Yeah, he doesn't want to be uh, telling her that they're all here for miracles and, you know, who knows? Uh, and um, he he wanted to be he wanted to be open minded, yeah. and I think that people who go to Lourdes, they're not necessarily open minded, but they're open hearted, and uh, and that's how they they allow something in. Even non believers, they allow something in, uh, and uh, I think he's he's trying to he's trying his best to be a modern priest, I guess. Um, <laughs> maybe in sixty seven he was ahead of his time. <laughs> well it's a good point because it's interesting like I, I given the nature of the story and where they were going his character I kind of thought would be like more of a driving driving force but it really is about these women uh, and they are incredible these women are just wonderful you the, what a wonderful cast yeah you really truly have um and I, I was wondering about that working with them. Uh, what was it like working with with? I mean, this this is a, an unbelievable roster that you had. It really is, yeah. Um, they were uh, they were attracted to the project because they loved the characters and um, the characters. I thought uh, they reflect. You know, they were. I think they were they were very well cast. Quite often, if you get a star in a movie, it's 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 not necessary not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, they're not often there for the right reasons. They might be there because they get the film financed or, uh, uh, or whatever. But I thought in, uh, that th these three women, I never worried about, uh, about the casting in this, despite the fact that they were, came from a different culture, all of them. Uh, Kathy Bates uh, got 
um, great grandparents were uh, Irish, and uh, Maggie Smith has uh, Irish uh, in, in her uh, too. Laura Linney uh, doesn't, but uh, uh, so I did worry about that. But they um, they just uh, went to the heart of the characters and they let the world around it uh, take shape. The world that I could offer them in terms of design, in terms of uh, mise-en-scene, the, you know, the lured. Uh, they, they trusted that. They went for the characters and they, being the actors they are, they had great insight of these characters uh, because they were so well cast. They just understood these characters very well and wanted to uh, bury around in their psyche and, and see what was going to, you know, be revealed. And they're very investigative uh, actors. They will, they will dig deep. Mm. And, uh, and uh, fortunately, their instincts were, were dead on. I didn't really have much to do on the day. So, except make sure everything was right for them. They're, they're just so wonderful. The, the, the chemistry between them is just so lovely. Yeah. Um, Thaddeus, I know we're, we're starting to run out of time, but I just wondered from your perspective, what do you hope people take away from the Miracle Club? I think they should definitely have a laugh. And um, they should really just, in, like you said, enjoy these three characters, these three women pulling in, pulling in all these different directions and discovering in, in themselves uh, the, the, uh, the ability to, for reconciliation probably at a time in their lives when they think that's something of, you know, that's something of the past. Uh, it, it, they're, they're having to face uh, through the character of, a, of a, the presence of Chrissy, they're having to face, uh, having to reconcile themselves with, with a lot of things. And, uh, but in the course of which, you know, I think they'll uh, have a laugh as well. Um, yeah. Well, the, the film is so much fun and I, I'm so grateful. Thank you for your time. I, I really do wish you the best and have a great day. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much.